Hello, my friends, and welcome to CSE 1322 Lab. This is the one hour lab section that accompanies your CSE 1322 lecture section. Um, each week, you're going to meet here in your lab if you're in an in person lab. Or if you're in an online lab, you're going to watch a little video that we're going to provide for you that's going to explain some of the topics. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to work on a lab assignment that we're going to give you each week. There are in-lab labs, and then there are also assignments. Both of them are going to be due every Sunday night at 11.59, and you're going to need to complete both of those every week. Um, so we're going to go through a couple of things in this. This is an introductory video just to make sure that you're properly set up and you know where to go. And then there will be a separate video each week which will explain the topic from that week. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the section and making sure that you're actually registered for the correct section. For CSE 1322 lecture, there are multiple lecture sections that exist, but they're all taught across languages. So if you're registered for um, a 1322 section, you can be in any section, it doesn't matter. So 1322.01, 02, W01, and so on and so forth. But with regard to the lab sections, which is what this class is about, the section number very much matters. If you're in a section that looks like this, CSE 1322.01, or hash 02, or hash 03, then the entire section is being taught in C sharp. If you are in a section that has a J in its name, like J01, J02, J03, J04, J05, or WJ1, then those sections are being taught exclusively in Java. And what I mean by that is, if you are in a Java section, one with a J in its name, then you must complete all of your assignments, all of your labs, your midterm, and your final exclusively in Java. Your GTA is going to work with you in Java, and everything you do in that lab must be in Java. Likewise, if you're in the hash01, hash02, hash03 sections, then everything you do, your labs, your assignments, your midterm, and your final must all be written in C sharp. Certain majors have requirements as to which language you should take, and for information on that, you should go to the CCSE advising website, and so this is ccse.kennesaw.edu slash advising, and under the frequently asked questions area, there's a register for CSE 1321 or 1322 lab section, and they have a helpful video that explains, but you can also see, that depending on your major, there are recommendations for which language you should be taking. So make sure that you are in the section that you think you are in. The two languages, in fairness, are very, very similar. 90% um, of the language is the same between Java and C Sharp, and as far as this class is concerned, it won't make a huge amount of difference, but certainly when we get to the graphics area, you're going to see quite large differences between the two of them, you're also going to see some differences in other areas, especially the parallels processing area. There's going to be differences there as well. And then there are subtle differences in the language, which that's covered in lecture, so you could get through regardless of which one you're in. But I just want to make sure that you are in the section that you think you are in. All right, so if you're not in the correct section, uh, drop ad days are probably here at the beginning of the semester, and you should be able to switch over during drop ad into a section that's available. If you are not able to find one that's available at the moment, then you might want to contact your um, advisor and see if they can get you an overload into a section that you need to be in. Um, bear in mind that the sections that have W's in their names are fully online sections, which means that you're not meeting in person with the GTA, you're just working on the labs and assignments uh, remotely. Okay, so uh, that's the general registration um, of the class. It is very important that you're in the right section because if you are in the wrong section and you turn in your code in Java and you're in a C-sharp section or vice versa, you will get a zero on the assignments. So it's very critical that you are in the section that you think you are in, or at least that you know what language you're working in. All right, so how's this gonna work? Well, um, for this lab, you are going to do labs and assignments each week. If you go to the FYE website, which is ccse.kennesaw.edu slash FYE, you're going to see a labs and an assignments tab. And under here, you're going to see 1322 labs and assignments. Generally, each week, the lab is going to be linked off of here. You're also going to have an assignment, which will be linked as the semester goes on. Those will appear as we go through the semester. And so typically, each week, you're going to start off with a PDF that looks something like this that's going to explain what it is you're trying to do, and then it's going to tell you how to go ahead and submit your code when you are done. So generally what's going to happen is there's going to be a video like this that's going to explain the topic. 
then your GTA is going to go over any questions that people may have and um, go over any other topics that are specific to that week's labs or assignment that might be useful to know. And then after that, you guys are going to work on your lab in the lab. And while you're doing that, if you have questions, you should ask your GTA, or if your section also has a TA available, um, you may be able to ask them uh, as well. As you're going through the assignments and the labs, if you get the lab done in lab time, you can go ahead and start the assignment for that week. Both the lab and the assignment are going to be due each week at midnight. And so if you want to know what to do on any given week, you're going to go back to that FYE website and you're going to click on course schedule and you'll see a 1322 lab schedule. And then this is going to have information. Bear in mind, this is from one semester. You may be looking at this in a future semester. Um, so this is going to show you what is due and what date it is due on. So make sure you look at the one for this semester and you go through it and understand um, which particular lab is due each week. So if on this first week, lab one is due, in this semester at 11.59 on a Sunday night. Typically, everything is going to be due at the same time, 11.59 on Sunday nights. Uh, somewhere in the middle of the semester, you're going to see here a midterm exam, and that's going to be taken here in your lab. If you are in an in-person section, then you're going to take it during your lab section during that week. And if you're in a if you're in an online section, then you're going to have a couple of days to complete the midterm and keep an eye out for announcements in your D2L shell with regard to the exact timing. Also, this schedule will have the correct dates for your semester, so make sure you are reviewing that um, schedule. You'll also take a lab final, which will happen during your last week of lab, and that's not during finals week, it's actually the week before that, the last scheduled week of classes. So again, make sure you're keeping track of this schedule. It will be updated throughout the semester. And again, that schedule is located on the FYE website, ccse.kennesaw.edu slash FYE under course schedules, and it should be linked right there. All right, so how does the grading work in here? Well, as you saw on that schedule, you're going to have a bunch of labs. Combined, the labs are going to be worth about 10% of your grade, and so it looks like in this semester there are 13 labs. The number may vary slightly just depending on the semester, but generally there's going to be about 13 labs, and combined they account for 10% of your grade. There are 12 assignments, and combined they're going to be worth 40% of your grade. So the labs and the assignments together are half of your grade. The midterm is going to be worth 20% of your grade, and the final exam is going to be worth the remaining 30%. So the two tests are worth 50%, and the assignments and labs are worth 50%. Um, as you're going through and you're doing these labs and the assignments, this is your opportunity to really learn the material that you learned in lecture that week before. So what I will tell you is that when you sit through the lecture, you're going to understand what's going on. And it all makes sense. And, you know, maybe it looks a little bit weird, but it's easy to sit in lecture and say, yeah, yeah, got it, got it, got it. That's all really easy. Where you're going to realize that you don't understand it is while you're trying to do the lab and the assignments. So the labs and the assignments are specifically designed to make you have to think through the material that you learned in lecture this week or the previous week. Um, the material in this class is cumulative, so if you don't understand something in the first week, that's going to continue being a problem until you learn it. But it's not uncommon for you to figure something out a few weeks into the semester. As a matter of fact, that's how most people learn. When you do it enough times, eventually it sinks in. So in the first few weeks, you might be having some trouble with stuff that you learned in 1321. Maybe loops didn't fully make sense to you, or maybe arrays didn't fully make sense to you. Well, you're going to have an opportunity to practice them again in these first couple of weeks where we're going to do stuff that's effectively assignments that are similar to what you were doing in 1321 or your equivalent intro class if you're transferring in. Um, as the semester goes on, the topics are going to be specific to 1322 where we're going to learn object-oriented programming and then we're going to move on to GUIs and recursion and then exception handling, file I.O., uh, threads, and eventually data structures. And so as you're going to see, the material is cumulative. So if something doesn't make sense one week, you will have to figure it out. And that's the point of these labs. So this all might sound scary, but what I'm trying to get across to you is that as you're doing the lab and the assignment each week, it's totally okay to reach out to your GTA, or if you have a TA also in the lab, reach out to your TA and ask for help. If at the end of the lab section, you still don't know how to do it, schedule an appointment to show up to your TA's office hours. Your GTA has office hours every week, 
And if your GTA is not available at the time that you're available, you can go to one of the other GTAs. Um, all of the GTAs are in an office at the top of the stairs in the atrium building. Um, and so if you just come up that staircase, the room that you're facing on your right in the corner is the GTA room. And so even if your GTA is not available, you can pop in and ask anybody there, or you can pop into the room around the corner from that, which is the instructor room uh, where we all sit, and you're welcome to ask us questions if you're stuck as well. Um, in addition to that, you have access to tutors, and so you can schedule a tutoring time, and that's done on the FYE website. There's a link to the tutors on the front page, um, and so you can go down there, and a tutor will work with you for 30 minutes to help you understand it. And that makes a lot of sense. So you have lots of resources to help you get through this. It's very important that you reach out and you ask questions because if you're stuck and you don't understand something, it's going to become more and more of a problem as the semester goes on. So make sure you understand each topic and you can actually do the labs and the assignments. Don't just get them done and turned in. Um, very frequently we have people come to us and say, I don't understand. I had, an, I had 100 or very close to 100 going into the midterm and then I scored a 27 on the midterm, and I don't understand what went wrong. And the answer is, it's probably because you got the assignments done, because you got help from tutors in your GTA, but you didn't really understand them. And that's what I'm trying to get across here. It's very, very important that you honestly can code the assignments in the lab from scratch by yourself after you get it done. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help, but after you're done, make sure that you still actually understand what it is that you're turning in. If you do that, you're going to do great on the lab midterm and on the final exam and also in the lecture because they're all tied together in one way or another. Okay, so again, every week you're going to have a lab and an assignment that's generally going to be due at midnight. Make sure you're keeping up with the schedule that's posted on the FYE site under Schedules 1322 Lab. And bear in mind that there are no makeups in this class. So if for any reason you miss a lab or you miss an assignment, you simply get a zero on it. There is no opportunity to turn it in late. There is no late work accepted for any reason whatsoever. However, we do drop the lowest lab and the lowest assignment grade. So once throughout the semester, you have a freebie where if you don't get something done because you were sick or other classes were just a higher priority or you had to study for a test or anything else went wrong, you had computer problems or anything like that, it's no problem. It just automatically gets dropped and then you'll be able to still do fine in the class. I would caution, don't leave, don't automatically assume that you're going to drop the first lab or the first assignment because you're going to be fine for the rest of the semester. If you do that and then you miss one later on, the zero does count in the later one. You only get to drop one lab and one assignment. So make sure that you attempt all of them and you leave that for an emergency situation. All right, so no makeups get everything turned in by 11.59. You're going to submit your assignments in Gradescope. Your GTA is going to set up a section for you in Gradescope. You don't have to do anything, but once you log into Gradescope, what you're going to see is you'll have a Java section like this one or a C-sharp section, depending on which class you're in. And then under Assignments, you're going to have a link for each of the assignments, and in there you'll have a Dropbox where you can drop in your um, assignment. Make sure that what you're turning in is source code. So if you're in C-sharp, you're going to be turning in .cs files. If you're in Java, you're going to be turning in .java files. So make sure that you're turning in source code, not object code, not text files or Word documents or anything else. You're only turning in code. Um, there are a few assignments throughout the semester where they will also ask you to turn in UML diagrams, and those will be PDFs. Just turn in the PDF for the UML. Everything else will be in code. So make sure you're always submitting the code, and often you'll be submitting more than one file if you're making a lot of different classes. Okay, so you have a GTA, you have a TA, perhaps. You also have access to tutors. You have access to the instructors from your lecture section. Um, you may have a recitation option that you may be able to go to. So there is plenty of opportunities for you to ask questions. The way that you will succeed in this class is trying things and showing up and asking questions. The folks who engage with us and ask us questions are the ones who make it through the class. The folks that get, you know, stuck on something and then leave it off in a corner, unfortunately, those are the folks who tend to not make it through the class. So be sure to reach out. Okay, so that is the introduction to this section. Um, next up, you're going to watch the video from uh, your particular week. And uh, we wish you the best. And always feel free to reach out and ask questions from your 
GTA, your TA, your instructors, your tutors. We're all here to help. Hope you have a great semester. See you soon.